six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Engine's full power. And let's go. We're in the second and final abort mode for the first stage, continuing to get good performance. The crew is already pulling over two Gs. And next up is going to be a couple of events in rapid succession. First will be engine chill on the second stage and back engine. And there you heard that call out. And then we'll have Miko or main engine cutoff where the nine engines igniting will cut off in preparation for second stage separation. Then we'll see the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage ignite and continue to carry the Crew-5 astronauts to orbit. Just like we did on first stage, that MVAC chill is intended to help pre-chill the hardware prior to the full flow of that densified liquid oxygen. Stage one throttle down. At this point in time, are beginning to throttle down in preparation for Miko or main engine cutoff. Standing by for Miko. And Miko. Stage two alpha. And Stage separation confirmed. Copy two alpha. There we should see that second engine begin to ignite now. <laughs> Obviously confirmed by the loud cheer behind us here at Mission Control Hawthorne. And we're also in two alpha for the aborts if needed. Again, second stage is lit and continuing to carry the crew five astronauts into orbit. We're now getting a view of the first stage uh, after that stage separation. The second stage is still being illuminated by that single Merlin vacuum engine and that's on the right hand side of your screen. First stage on the left-hand side of your screen, making its way back to Earth. We will be attempting to land it on our drone ship, um, which today we are using just read the instructions. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. And we did hear that acquisition of the ground station in Bermuda. The first stage is continuing to make its way back to Earth, and the second stage is going Dragon, to continue. SpaceX. Trajectory nominal. Another good call. Trajectory nominal. Drop and copy. Confirmation there from Commander Nicole Mann. You can also sort of see the, the Space Coast there in the background of the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen. It also looks like you can actually see the thrust plume uh, created by the first stage as it's now rotating just out of screen. Second stage is going to continue firing until a little over eight minutes into the flight, really doing the heavy lifting now, getting the crew into orbit. Everything continues to look nominal on both first and second stages. As I mentioned before, the first stage will be making uh, a, a landing on one of our drone ships, which is currently parked a couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. So we can see now that... Dragon, SpaceX. 
trajectory help. Good confirmation there that we have good trajectory. The second stage now traveling over 5,400 miles per hour. Crew is pulling a little more than one G right now. That's going to continue to ramp up, peaking just before we get to second stage cutoff here in just a few minutes from now. First stage will be performing two separate burns, a re-entry burn where we reignite three of the Merlin back, or excuse me, the Merlin M1D engines on the first stage. Uh, we ignite the center engine into radial, radial engines to help slow it down as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. And then the second final burn, and that will be the landing burn on our drone ship. And the single M back engine right, that you see. Trajectory the single M back engine that you see see on the right of your screen is continuing to fire. We did hear another call out that trajectory is nominal. Crew heading in the direction that they are supposed to be. This single engine can produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space. Now over 200 kilometers in altitude. We will start to hit events now in a rapid succession as the first stage continues to make its way back to Earth and the second stage continues its burn. Just a couple minutes left in that burn. For those of you just joining us, just over six and a half minutes ago, uh, our four Crew-5 astronauts launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida and they are now making their way into orbit on the second stage inside Dragon. Crew Dragon. Which we're hearing that the trajectory on that is nominal. Uh, Dragon copy. They are in, safe inside uh, Dragon Endurance, whereas the first stage on the left hand side of your screen uh, is making its way back to Earth. We are coming up to the re entry burn, which, as I said before, we ignite three of the nine Merlin engines to help slow the booster down as it re enters the dense part of the Earth's atmosphere. As the entry burn completes, we'll be in the Stage final... Stage one, entry burn startup. So there we've got the call two, out. You can there see it on your screen that that entry burn has been initiated. And as that entry burn completes, we'll be in the final um, different abort phases here shortly, which essentially correspond to areas along the very northeastern seaboard of the U.S. Stage and then, one, entry burn shut down. Great news, that entry burn was shut down, and then those last all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, Atlantic off the coast of Scotland for those abort zones. Everything continues to look nominal for both the first and second stage stages. And the crew with the second stage still attached is now traveling over 13,000 miles per hour. We're about 10 seconds away from Seco 1. Copy, Shannon. Shannon, that call out. That call out for Shannon, Ireland, indicative of our final abort zone. After this, we'll see second stage shut off and we'll be listening for confirmation of a good orbit, which tells us the crew and Dragon are exactly and where they need to be. Down. And there we had confirmation that the impact has shut down simultaneously. Uh, the entry. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. And you heard that call for a good insertion. We will coast for a few minutes. There we can see the drone ship coming into view as Falcon 9 Launch attempts. System. Stage one landing leg deploy. You can see those landing legs have now deployed. And as you can see on your screen, and you can hear by the clapping and cheering behind me, Falcon 9 has landed on our drone ship just through the instructions, parked off the coast of Florida. And again, that second stage 
separation will be coming up just a couple of minutes now. We do coast for a few I minutes after second a engine cutoff to allow any rates to or motion to dampen out and settle. And looks like we're going to get a view of the second stage as it separates here shortly. We did hear that the crew has been successfully inserted into a good orbit. Again, the crew is still attached to the second stage. We are expecting stage separation to occur in just over a minute from now, about one minute and eight seconds. And that's when the, uh, excuse me, when the second stage will separate from the dragon trunk. The dragon trunk is the part of hardware where we are able to house the uh, cargo that is able to be exposed to the vacuum of space as well as the solar panels, which help power Dragon while it is on orbit. Again, that stage separation is now coming up in about 30 seconds. After stage separation, we will have nose cone deployment. Now that Dragon is in the vacuum of space, we're able to, we will be able to open the nose cone and expose that forward hatch, which is what is utilized to dock uh, autonomously with the International Space Station. And that nose cone does stay closed for the flight uphill to help protect all of the guidance, navigation, and control sensors. We are standing by for second stage separation. And there is separation. Dragon separation confirmed. And Dragon, this is your next record. Dragon copy again. Dragon, this is your launch record on Dragon. On behalf of the entire launch and recovery team, it was an honor and a pleasure to be a part of this mission with you. And while October 3rd may belong to the Mean Girls, October 5th will forever belong to Crew 5. Godspeed endurance. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you so much to the Falcon team. Woo! That was a smooth ride up here. We got three rookies that are pretty happy to be floating in space right now, and one uh, veteran astronaut who's pretty happy to be back as well. Let's see what you got to say, Coochie. Uh, soccer team, uh, you know, it was a smooth ride, and uh, I see all the three happy faces here in, in back in zero-G, and I appreciate all the help to give us this smooth ride and training, and thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Anya. Uh, thank you, Falcon 9 and uh, uh, several uh, agencies, uh, to Ross Cosmos, NASA, and JAXA, and C6 exactly for uh, giving us that opportunity. We so glad to do it together. And uh, thank you for everybody, for all people who are with us. Thank you for the agency Ross Cosmos, NASA, JAXA, and of course, SpaceX, for the available to us. We are happy to do the team equipage and do what we are doing. And thank you to all the people who are now with us. Some really nice words there from the Crew 5 crew, as well as... And Dragon Falcon 9, see you. Thanks for the words. Uh, had a great ride. Have a good mission. We'll see you later. A wonderful Mean Girls reference there by launch director uh, Mark Soltis, and then we just heard from Chief Engineer Dan Alex. And we just heard our first Quindar tone. Indicating the crew is Nominal in space. Dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. Expected loss of signal, New Hampshire. Dragon copy. 
And Kate, it did look like we were getting our first views of that microgravity indicator. I did see that as well. <laughs> And we're getting views now of the crew on orbit, three of them for the first time ever. We saw some cheers, some high fives. Looks like they're feeling great. Hopefully we can see that zero G indicator float back into view and hopefully get a better shot of it. I couldn't quite tell what it was, although it kind of looked like it may have been an Einstein doll, uh, but that's just kind of what it looked like from the, the backside. I think you're right, Kate. It looked like a baby Einstein to me. <laughs> <laughs> so the next milestone that we're looking ahead towards is the nose cone opening. If you've just joined us, joined us, we had a successful liftoff uh, exactly 16 minutes ago of the Crew-5 mission. Uh, they had an on-time liftoff from Kennedy Space Center at noon Eastern time. They had a smooth ride up to orbit. The first stage landed successfully on our drone ship. Uh, just read the instructions and everything has been looking good so far. Uh, we are hoping to get another view on board Dragon uh, once we're able to get that camera back. Uh, but so far, uh, you know, everything leading up to this point in time, we got a shot there of the uh, MVAC engine, which is no longer firing. It is uh, coasting um, with that sec it's attached to the second stage which has been separated from Dragon. Um, yeah, so everything was super smooth this morning, uh, starting all the way back. Uh, I think we got here around T minus four hours and uh, super smooth countdown, beautiful day from Kennedy Space Center. It looked like a, a gorgeous view uh, from where Daryl and Bob were sitting. Uh, but yeah, we are uh, standing by for the nose cone opening. Now that the Dragon spacecraft is in space, we are able to- Target loss of signal, if it like. We are able to open up that uh, nose cone and expose the forward hatch, which is what is utilized to autonomously uh, dock with the International Space Station, but of course to protect that hardware that as well. As well as uh, protect the uh, guidance and navigation control hardware. Uh, we keep that nose cone closed during uh, launch preparations and during the ascent portion. So, uh, as you can see, saw there uh, momentarily, uh, Dragon is in space, and uh, the crew four, or excuse me, the crew five astronauts, all four of them are um, floating, uh, or they will be able to float soon. Uh, we're hoping to get another view of that zero G indicator once we're able to bring cabin. Uh, onboard cabin views uh, back to you of the Crew 5 crew. Uh, we always like to see what the uh what the zero-g gravity indicator is, as you saw earlier in the web webcast, uh, Bob actually brought uh, the zero-g indicator that he and Doug used on the Demo 2 mission, uh, a lovely sequin dinosaur, which I also have one at my desk. Not the, uh, Bob obviously has the one that went to space. Mine is a replica, uh, but we love seeing these zero-g indicators. It's a really nice way to connect uh, those of us on ground with the folks up in space. So as I said before, we are anticipating uh, nose cone deployment shortly. Uh, just I'm gonna do a quick check-in and oh, there we can see now uh, the nose cone, the hooks have been released and we see that nose cone moving with a pretty up close shot. We're continuing to see that nose cone open and- Acquisition of signal, line. As we've mentioned, this does uncover a number of critical systems for the flight up to the space station that will be required for docking. There are six hooks that hold the nose cone in place during the launch and ascent portions. Those have begun to retract and the nose cone is beginning to swing open.